Alright, welcome back to the Super Coach Enough channel. In this video, we're going to review week 6 of the 2024-25 NBA Dream Team season. Uh, and I guess an average week uh, for us, although above average score, I suppose 942 isn't the worst. Um, but I guess only 25 up in the overall, so into the top 15% now, which is progress. But I uh, was sort of hoping towards uh, four figures this week, but didn't quite work out that way. So let's have a look at the team and see how they went. <coughs> Excuse me. And so James Harden, one of our trade-ins this week, uh, went quite well with a 1 of 37. So that's a great return from him. Uh, Daniels continued to be quite good with 69 points. Uh, has dipped a little bit in cash, so maybe at his sort of peak. Um, have to find some more cheapies, I guess, to generate uh, some upgrades there. Uh, McCain only had two games, so 11 is probably about what we expected, um, and has probably reset his break-even. Edwards with just the 71, I think he was another one that only had a couple of games, maybe three based on the average, so that's not the worst, I suppose. Um, Jerome with 26, uh, was outpointed by Castle with 32, so uh, obviously missing a few points there. Uh, Djokic is captain with a 108, you know, wasn't the worst uh, return. Edie still out with that injury. I guess they're being a bit cautious with him. Uh, Johnson, who I'm pretty sure was another trade-in this week. Actually, I think both he and Wagner were trade-ins. And some great returns there with a 132 and a 110. Uh, Boston with a 50 on the bench makes some good money. Uh, Towns with a 137 was good. Saar with 44 continues to tick along. And Filipowski uh, did not play. So that's uh, turned out to be a bit of a dead rookie. I'll uh, have a look at the head-to-head -head first and we'll go from there. So week six. So a comfortable win in the end over the Autistics Coopers team. So only a few point of difference players, and I guess Johnson and, and Wagner were the big difference makers for my team. Um, I don't, don't know, all the balls start with L, so Lamello, um, scoring a 58. Resacker, who we got rid of, the 53, probably has reset his break even a bit. 34, bit of a slow burn. Um, played McCain and... And Giannis with just the 49. So I think that was a wise decision to trade him out. However, um, we may want to get him back in this week. Uh, but just looking across the league, I can see a 962, uh, which is the highest score. And uh, I guess I was second highest, so I'll take that. Uh, Chet GPT sitting first in the league uh, with a 962, no wonder. So he actually captained Wagner, which was... Uh, a pretty nice move. Um, Towns and, and Harden as well, so that's worked out well. Um, but has Vukovic, I think that's how you say that, in the centres. Um, so Siakam, 96. Hero with a 98. Nice sort of, in, I guess is sort of bottomed out in terms of price, so that's interesting. Um, connect with 57, so he's been going pretty strong for those that held. And Fox with the 79, so didn't miss too many there, um, to be honest. So well done to you, James. Uh, let's have a bit of a look at the, the break evens, well, top scorers and break evens. So Anthony Davis continues to, to carve up at, uh, at, uh, Power forward or centre with a 149. Uh, Gilgis Alexander with a 142 was massive. Sabonis with 140. So, you know, outpointed uh, Jokic this week, which would have been nice. Um, but after that, we had the next three, so that's really handy. Um, Wemby with a 120. So, obviously, you know, he's gone up and up since uh, we got rid of him. <laughs> um Kessler with a 121, that's a decent return for the two people who owned him. Um, Barnes, H Hartenstein, 118, so another sort of cheap center type option. 
Malik Monk under 10 mil and uh, crack in the ton. Uh, break even at 27. That's very tempting. Jason Tatum cracking the ton as well. So still on the radar. RJ Barrett doing well again this week. And then after that, we're into the, the double figures. So we won't worry too much about the rest. But uh, what we will look at is the break-evens. So Spencer Dinwiddie, that's actually a pretty cool name, <laughs> scored a 93 this week. So it'll be interesting to see why the, the uptick. Um, if I can go to the stats, here we go. So just real low and then... I guess has started to uptick, so maybe was returning from an injury or might have just found his way into the team, but that average is on the increase, and if we look at, say, the last five rounds, you know, probably averaging in the 20s, so, or around 20, I thought that was another 30 down there, but it wasn't, <laughs> so, yeah, slowly increasing, so I guess could be a potential option. Uh, Peyton, it's a pretty cheap price coming off a 73. It's pretty handy. Filipowski is still there if he can get back in the team. Uh, Ricky Council, the fourth, that's another pretty cool name. <laughs> With a 48 this week. Um, so, yeah, quite a few cheapies there, but uh, you know, none obviously jumping out the ground of massive averages, more so. I guess having a big week this week, so potentially a couple of weeks worth of uh, cash potentially. So let's have a, a bit of a look at the team, I'll have a look at the most popular trades. I wasn't uh, super quick to jump on here, so looks like it could be pretty accurate. So it looks like just a few of those 7 mil cheapies out for you know these cheaper guys, the likes of uh, Peyton. Isaac Jones, pretty cheap. You'd like to see that. Um, Brunson at the upper end. So break even of 85 is probably not too exciting to jump on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Tyrese Martin. Okay, so let's... Uh, we got three trades. We've only got a mil in the bank. So I might just go to projections. So I guess the other thing I should have checked is the fixtures this week. Is this the one where it goes over two weeks? Okay, so it looks like it only goes up to the 10th of December. But is there a break after this, I think? Is that the catch? Week 8 doesn't start yet until the 20th. So there is like a little mini break after this week. So I think this is uh, accurate in terms of the, the game week. And uh, it looks like most teams have six, the likes of the Nets, the Mavs, Pistons. So there's a few that only have five. So plenty of strong returns, but we will try to maximize the uh, the six-game teams. I know one of those cheapies was from the Nets, who was uh, Tyrese Martin. So I only got the five games instead of six. But I guess if he creates another 53 out of that, you make some good money. I do like uh, the projected there, 1.2 mil for Peyton. So, uh, looking at break-evens, Daniels probably has the ability to get to 71, so that's okay, I think. It doesn't look like there's that many fixtures there that they get 6, but must do if you go through it well enough. <laughs> That's all good. Um, on the next line, so Jerome and Castle sort of Jerome projected to lose money. Um, so I think based on this, most of these guys are good. It does Orlando play, yeah, Orlando has the six matches. 
to be TBC TBC not sure what that's about is it some sort of I don't know <laughs> some sort of challenge maybe weird weird draw set up but we'll work it out um, so I think just based on break even, even though you know these guys might not be getting a run, I think we've got to keep them around. So I think yeah, it's gonna be well McCain's average is projected seventy four, so maybe it's Jerome. Who does he play for again? Cleveland. They got six. The Spurs have six. Philly have six. Uh, I forgot. Can't remember half the teams. Minnesota have six. So Washington six. U Utah only have the five. So maybe we could potentially look at Filipowski out. Despite the break even, New Orleans, what are they doing? They got six. Uh, all that, did we already look at Orlando? Yeah, they got six. Atlanta, they got six. New York, six. Denver. Six. Because I guess the other potential option is if we want to look at getting Giannis back. He's got six. I know we did sort of downgrade here, but Wagner's probably peaked in that sense. So let's see how much money we would need. We need 8 mil. It's going to be a bit tough, I think. Not really set up for that kind of cash flow. <laughs> um, you know, I might have to just go without, maybe. Could potentially just go to, to Tatum. That would be an easier upgrade. Or if we switch Edwards, Gilgis Alexander sort of comes in range. Although I think Oklahoma only has five, so not really the target for this week. So if I just go back, can we go the other way? Potentially not really. We don't have a swing forward. What's Barrett's break even? 72... Projected to score 94. Actually make a little bit of money out of that, which would be nice. Thompson's still making some money too, which is pretty cool. It's the time to get LeBron. <laughs> no, not with a 149 break even, I don't think. If we go Barrett, that's that's one trade we can do. Um, still want to get Peyton in, so let's just have a look at Jerome's output. Yeah, so, okay, dropped right off there and only scored three. All right, let's, yeah, I think it's his time's up. We'll do uh, Peyton if I can find him. Oh, that's right, he's point guard only. So swing. Let's 
Dinwiddie projected. Only 25, so that's not ideal. Alright, so we've got pay. We've got 7 mil in the bank. So it is probably an opportunity to to do another little sort of upgradey type trade to get to one of those mid price options. What if we filter? And I reckon we start at about 10 mil or 10.3. Nine point nine will do. Ah, so this is where Malik Monk comes into it with a break even of twenty seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Kessel with that one twenty one is very tempting. What's break even of oh, break even of thirty is right there. I actually want projections, that's what I want. Eighty. Doesn't give you, oh, yeah, it does give you the break even in the projection as well. Here we go, this will work. So, looks like he is the highest projected. Hardenstein, despite having one less game, is projected at uh, 76, which is interesting. Has a superior sort of break even as well. Don't really know what's going on with Edie, though, that's the problem. If he's back, he'll probably. Start making some more money. Because, yeah, these guys are just centers. That's the one issue. I feel like maybe something like a, a castle to a monk makes sense, just based off average. But we could probably do a little bit better on average, I thought. So what if I trade him out? That'll help. Of the names we've seen before with Powell, Braun. Alright. No, I can't get to Cunningham. I might have to just change it to players I can afford. Here we go. So, yeah, just the poor averages are a bit off-putting. Um, Anthony Simons, 14. A few people that aren't playing at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I filter averages or something? Oh, here we go. Let's say so we want 50 points. Does that give us pretty cool? I haven't really used a lot of this sort of more advanced metric type stuff before, but then again, I usually know a lot more about the, the people involved. Um, so yeah, Monk comes up again pretty high in terms of average. Pritchard as well for Boston, Sacramento. Just double check. Sacramento's got six. Boston's got six, so they've both got the extra fixture. I think given he is the one of the most popular options, maybe we just follow the crowd. It's a bit boring, but it's probably not the right time of the season to start making pod moves. So let's do that. Get the uh, projections back up. I'll see if and then he's not projected to outscore Kane, but we want that 500k that he's going to offer us. Um, not too much else other than that. Everything looks like it's going to be the same. So Jokic is captain. Just keep Towns as VC, although Johnson does rate a bit higher. And yeah, so I guess just to quickly review those trades. So you know, a little bit of a, a cash out with Peyton for Jerome. Potentially a bit of a sideways move, Barrett to Wagner, but trying to get a bit of money with that similar uh, score. And then maybe a slight 
upgrade with Monk uh, to Castle, um, but probably not going to be the most useful this week. So I'll just close that and try to fit the team in as best we can. We're pretty close. I think you can half see the name down the bottom there. <laughs> but uh, we'll wrap the video up there, get it out to you all. So as always, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to add them below the video. Give us a like if you enjoy the NBA content. Subscribe for all the fantasy sports content on the channel. And other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.